Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake 2. I'm Burning Dog Face, and we're down here in the overlap. Which means we're getting closer to the dark place again. Which means I'm not happy about going down this creepy, gross corridor. I guess this was a, an aqueduct at some point. As I look at it. I just assumed it was a mine because of the wooden, uh, you know, supports shoring up the ceiling. Shout out to Justin Jones, who says, Maybe the cult chose to adopt the deer mask for the same reason that Bruce Wayne chose to incorporate bats into the Batman persona. Because it scares or disturbs them. It's a way to take control over something that scares you and use it for your own ends. By the way, the carnival music is very unsettling, and the recorded laughter positively unnerving. It felt the same way. Oh, and I like this observation. Shout out to Duffelfish, who says, Wait, so the Cult of the Tree are privy to what Alan did in the dark place in the first game? If I remember correctly, he put his hand with the clicker inside uh, Cynthia's chest and clicked it. It was actually Barbara Jagger, not Cynthia Weaver, but yes! I, I realized only after that was pointed out to me that the ritual they have for destroying the Taken, clicking the thing inside their chest, that's... Well, I mean, he didn't cut out Barbara's heart. Uh, it was already gone. But he did stick the clicker in her chest and click it to destroy her in the end. I'm just gonna check the loadingness of my guns and my crossbow. Okay. Actually, on second thought, I am going to switch to the shotgun, because this is very close quarters if something jumps out at me. Okay, I feel like an aqueduct wouldn't have a door, but maybe this stuff is, you know, not real anymore. A door that leads to the surface. I'm just gonna stop questioning that now. I don't know why I was expecting that to make any sense. We got stuck in an infinite loop walking in a circle last time. This must be the cabin from those murderers. That shit on the uh, axe, on the other uh, stump next to the. A boat with no bottom, or a boat that has had the bottom filled with silt and leaves. I'm not sure which. Oh, I hate the way the woods look here. There's so much darkness. And it's getting louder as I get closer to the door. Oh, it is the door. I'm getting... If I walk over here... Nothing. Another one of these weights. I find them next to these things. Maybe it's a float. I don't know why I thought the map would work. Okay, let's go into Murder House. Let's do it. That was perfect timing on the sound effect there, by the way. Nothing inside. So this is where I go in and someone grabs me from behind, right? That's how these jump scares work. You know, you open the door and there's nothing. And the tense, you know, it seems like the tense music was a waste. And then something gets the guy anyway. You know, it's like in a horror movie when, like, uh, you hear something, a noise from a closet, and you carefully creep forward and the tense music is happening. Maybe you even get the violins of tension. And then you open the door and a cat jumps out and, and yowls loudly and runs away. And, you know, it's a fake jump scare, but you're still startled and you feel relieved afterwards because it was just a cat. And then you get stabbed in the brain. You, like, turn around and the killer is right fucking there and you bump into him. I might not like horror movies, but I'll be damned if I'm not going to understand the things I don't like. Deputies in the Morgue. Brand new paper. A lot of hand notes on this one. Mulligan and Thornton in the wreckage of the morgue. Shadows on their faces. Thornton did his best woman's voice. I'm a stuck-up FBI bitch. I'll make a big fucking mess, then get these dumb backwater cops to clean it up. 
Thornton turned to his partner. These government motherfuckers. Next time, Mulligan, I'll tell her. You got no clue. You let your own kid drown. You're a fucking fraud. Mulligan leered. Pinning the murder on the bookers would have fixed this whole goddamn mess. But their kind always sticks together. I reckon we should show the bitch who's boss, Oh, Thornton. God. Shadows crept over Mulligan and Thornton. Inside them, they grinned. Their kind always sticks together. I reckon we should show this bitch who's boss. Oh, God. I'm pretty sure that's about the fact that both Saga and the Bookers are black. I kind of didn't think they were going to go there. Okay, so I take back any nice things I might have ever said about Mulligan and Thornton. Fuck those guys. Being evil cultists is one thing, but being racist is just uncalled for. This game got quite enough of that already. Uh, this side. Yeah, this side. It's a fucking song. Of course it's a sauna. Is that the same house I was in? No, no, no. It was more cramped than this in that house, I think. Well, this one isn't on, but still, you know, good habits. There we go. You know, uh, a whole bunch of people were really upset, really meaninglessly, when they announced the character of Saga Anderson. And you could, uh... Now, the funny thing is, it was always really obvious when the people complaining were only doing it because they, you know, hated the fact that, you know, one of the playable characters was either a woman or black. Because, you know, they'd wrap it up in all these things, and then they'd slip up by including some stupid insult that always tipped their hand. It, we got, it was so specific, it was to the point where you could tell the ones who uh, were misogynists because they referred to this game as Alana Wake, whereas the, uh, the, the ones who were racist referred to the game as Alan Woke. On a side note, fuck them. Just judging this character before we'd even seen them. These are the dumbest problems. I think Saga is every bit as interesting a protagonist for this story as Alan was for the original one. And it's not like he's not here, guys! Apparently, I'm allergic to reminding myself of bullshit because I needed to sneeze. I don't mean to bring up real life drama. It just bothered me how. Everyone at your best goals. What is it how uh, transparent it was. I wanted to say to finish that thought. Now it's time to be afraid. Ah, uh, it's you sons of bitches. Oh. They find this funny or something. Oh, their voices sound like they're coming from all over the place. It grew inside them. So if this cult was trying to keep the darkness out, why are they getting possessed? You know, why were the cultists we saw in the opening cutscene killing a Taken, all covered in darkness and having the voice modulation? You got no clue. Maybe they only think they're holding the darkness back, but they're actually playing right into its metaphorical hands. The darkness taking over. It's 
the well. Logan? Logan! I'm here! Logan! You know, I told myself I'd stop using that title because I'd used it so many times, but I'm really tempted to call this episode What Lies Beneath. I thought for sure I was going to start to climb down and get pulled in by Mulligan or something. All I can see is Saga right now. I can't even see the ladder she's holding. The story is trying to take Logan. I can still stop this. Oh, God. Oh, why is it doing... He has it now. Wake? I saw him this way in the other overlap. You're being tricked. Oh, God. If Alan can still send messages from the dark place, who the fuck did I leave in Bright Falls? Come on! Oh, I've gone back to the fucking cabin. It's a loop. Just like before. This game seems fixated on loops. Uh, oh, that's a dead guy. I thought the person they murdered was Monica from the store. Ooh. Don't just leave a page out in the rain. Mocha's funeral. Oh, boy. This is going to be delightful. Ilma Koskela stood in front of the small gathering of Coffee World employees and bikers. He read from a piece of paper. Mocha was a wonderful moose who deserves a place of honor in the Hall of the Calavella Knights. His skull will become the crown of the Grand Master. The dead brought back to life. There was polite applause. After the service, Ilmo had the body hauled off to be turned into moose steaks. Mulligan and Thornton were told to get the head cleaned. They both grabbed an antler. What the hell, Thornton? I got it, Mulligan. They brought the skull into the workshop to boil it and bleach it. They grumbled. Wanted to just get it fucking done. It was just a stupid animal. But I guess moose steak is never a mistake, huh? I don't like those guys very much. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know that I ever did. Although I do distinct I distinctly remember a bit from the first game where uh, they started giving uh, Nightingale shit for uh, opening fire on Alan Wake as he was fleeing. You know, given that he hadn't actually done anything that they knew about, he was just a person of interest. Although, to be fair, they didn't do that until after Sheriff Sarah Breaker uh, just really started laying into him. Just, what the hell is wrong with you? Threatened to call his supervisor and all that. Are these drawers open? Once again, nothing in the sauna. Oh, I guess that's supposed to be full of water, so you can just drizzle it over the thing and make more steam. I don't want to walk to the end of this pier, but I'm going to do it anyway. Hmm. He's giving me flashbacks to the, uh... The Easter egg in Resident Evil 4 if you mess with the fish. 
I don't know if they brought that one back in the remake or not. I haven't played that yet. I guess that game's a lot better than I assumed it would be, because, uh... And about face, and we're going to walk the fuck away from that, except we're still in the overlap, so it doesn't matter, I've suddenly realized. Awesome! We have to walk towards the horrible growl. Fuck you, I'm going that way this time. Ah yes, it doesn't go anywhere. Great. I notice I'm not hearing anyone speaking ominously anymore. Come on, do I have to? So I guess this is what the Hwautari Well looked like when it was uh, not in the middle of Coffee World, and there was just a little house there. Oh. No, that's not it. A little crane hook is <laughs> Fuck me! This is a nightmare. I can't get through that. I need to look for another way through. Oh no. The song about Mr. Scratch is playing. Oh, uh, Justin, when I interacted with the uh, ladder of the well this time. Uh, there was a long jump scare that came out immediately as I pushed the button. And now the well is full of blood. Like, all the way up to the top. And spraying out the side. Well, not spraying, but it spilled out onto the side. Ati? Scratch. I've just suddenly had the thought that it would be actually really funny if there was a character in this game voiced by Ilka Vili. You know, since they got all these Finnish people about. I mean, I wouldn't know. Is that the lake out? Yeah, it is the lake. There's just nothing around here but water. Nightless night, wasn't it? Oh! Phantasms of people slow dancing. Okay. I really lingered for a second. I've looped back around to the well. Yeah. But the sound leads in this direction, where we came from the first time. I 
tent. And a campsite. I thinking I could use more bullets. Thank you. Hmm. Is it coming from these walkie talkies? Cultist outfit. Stay down. Yeah, I'd say we're in the right place. Timer did go, unfortunately. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Alan Wake 2. When we, uh, head further into the woods and, uh, try and get to the bottom of this recursive nightmare. Until then, have yourselves a great day. Hmm. And stay in the light.